Honestly, I think this talk is probably the most important talk. Uh, not because I'm giving it, because I think we do a really good, jo uh, terrible job at the radiation safety education. Um, how many of you guys receive radiation safety talks at your institution? That's not bad. How many of you guys think they do practice good saf safety radiation techniques? Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, and uh, do you guys know who is your radiation safety officer at your institution? That's, wow, okay, some heads shaking. That's pretty good, okay. Um, so, I mean, I can tell you one thing when I, um, you know, transitioned from fellow to, to an attending, you know, I kind of realized that we really don't do a good, good job with radiation safety. I was like, well, let me take this on. I'm going to give this talk to the, to the fellows. And boy, did I learn a lot. Uh, did I learn how bad I was at really practicing radiation safety techniques. So, um, so hopefully I'll be able to share some of that stuff. But really, it's something that you guys do need to take seriously. And I don't know if you guys already seen the YouTube video of Dr. Dietrich from Arizona Heart. Um, and there was a recent um, article, I think it was an SVS specialist, where he talked about three, three, four people who dedicate a lot to this specialty and interventional cardiology and, and their experience with radiation. So, so take it seriously. Um, so again, this is a lifelong commitment, right? We're doing more complex endo. We're doing fenestrated, branched, um, uh, complex, hybrid-like intervention. So I mean, it's, it's like pretty much we're in the hybrid room all the time. Um, also, know your duration safety officer. Trust me, they love it. I mean, the guy at Methodist now, when I introduce myself, I you know, go with him, give talks to nurses and anesthesiologists and CRNAs. And he, he loves it because they're usually slammed and they need someone to help them. And so they appreciate the help. And I always learn a lot from him and from, from giving these talks. So, um, and also, some states actually now require you to pass the test. I mean, I took it even before Texas required it, just to see. It's, it's not an easy test. Uh, but some states now require you to take it. So you can divide um, uh, radiation into ionizing and non-ionizing. Obviously, ionizing is the one that we, we, we use, right? Uh, uh, X-rays and some of the radioactive material. Uh, Non-ionizing radiation, you know, like, for example, ultrasound and microwave. So, uh, so there are a little bit two different uh, categories. So if you think of, um, of X-rays, usually they're like, think of them as a bundle of radiation called photons. And X-rays, you know, literally they are just pure energy and then they have no mass and are structurally equivalent to visible light. So most X-rays actually interact in the human body, causing changes in molecular structures through ionization. Uh, some photons are scattered and that's what actually hurts us. Uh, others are completely absorbed, usually, you know, obviously in the, in the patient. Those X-rays that successfully pass essentially straight through the patient contribute to the radiograph. That's what you see. The ones that pass through, that's what you see. And the scatter is actually what hurts us. And then I'll show you some, some pictures later. So, um, so basically, if you're standing, <coughs> I guess it's not reflecting since it's white. But basically, so, so most of it actually goes through the patient, what you see. But we have a lot of scatter that comes, comes, and that's what's, what's really is going to hurt you. Um, and obviously, the heavier the patient, the more magnifications, obliques, other stuff you do, the more the scatter. And that's what's going to eventually hurt you. So, so please wear your monitor badge. Make sure you return them. Make sure you use them. And obviously, return them so you can actually get monitored how much you are getting exposed to radiation during your training and as a, as a faculty. And that's actually one of the best practices that we really have to do it. So. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and it is a serious issue. I mean, it's linked to cancer, skin cancer, other um, um, hematological cancers, cataract. When I was in training, they say, well, we're not sure about cataract. But no, it is. It is it's a real deal. So I wear my lead glasses religiously. Make sure you guys have them too. So what we did for our program is actually we bought a bunch of them because they're actually expensive. So what we did, we just bought a bunch of them. We put them on the front desk. And then the fellows or the resident, they come, they, they borrow one, and they're supposed to return it. So, uh, so make sure make sure you use them, and you know it's it's a cumulative risk. I mean, you like I said, you can be doing this every day. And then the thing is, maybe like for example, I might have two cases, right? With uh, the radiation, I go to my office, do some work, but you might be doing the other two with an another attending. So you actually be probably more exposed to radiation than any other person, especially during your training. Correct. So. Um, 
And the mitosis phase, and in case that comes on your, on your exam, because we're getting, I think last year we, uh, from our stance, from our residents told me they had quite a bit of radiation safety questions on the visa. I don't know if that's true or I'm just making this up, but I remember they had quite a bit. So, but mitosis is the most sensitive to radiation induced replication permanent. Obviously, the immature cells are the more uh, radio sensitive, and the hypoxic cells are less, you know, uh, because of less oxygen free radicals. Uh, so, for example, the brain and the fat cells, since they're highly differentiated, they usually they're not usually they're not affected as as much. So, this is a lot of a lot of terminology. So, basically, um, think of it. So, the best, the best way is to think of uh, stochastic effects versus deterministic effects. Is that stochastic effect? If you're going to get cancer, whether you get exposed to 1,000 milligray or 10,000 milligray, it's cancer, right? Doesn't make difference. But deterministic effect. Your skin damage, you know, 2,000 versus 500 milligray is, is completely different. So the higher the dose, the worse the, the effect, okay? So these are the kind of in, in, in simplistic way of explaining the difference between the two. So um, um, uh, Rotan is, you know, obviously is one of the, one of the first, um, actually the guy who invented X-ray was, was named, this unit was named, named after him. Um, and usually what we measure uh, we measure usually what's uh, what we call air karma, what's, measure, what's actually gets radiated into the, um, into the air. So, um, and typically we use grays, right? Like, I mean, I don't know if you guys also uh, document that like, after procedure, what was the flora time and how many grays or milligrays. So this is typically what you're actually documenting, okay? But uh, now most people use what we call the dose equivalent. The reason for using the dose equivalent because you can actually measure radiation-specific biological damage. And usually they use a unit called sievert. And the reason for that is say, they're trying to kind of say, okay, how many of sievert you need to cause cataract? How many to cause this type of cancer? So they're trying to basically identify some of these, um, um, to, to have a uh, unified unit to talk about, um, have a scale basically to, uh, to measure how many, how many sievers you'll need to get certain damage, whether it's cancer or cataract or skin damage. Um, and since we're using photon, the, the qualification factor is one, so RAM is pretty much as equal to RAD, and uh, 100 RAM is equal to one sievert. You guys are all familiar with your uh, with the image intensifier, right? So where's the so where does the X-ray come from? From from the bottom, from the top, yeah, from the bottom to the patient gets collected through the image intensifier, and basically there's optical coupling, and then you see the pictures on your on your monitor. So so I'm gonna just show you some some of the stuff um, uh, that you can do to minimize um, your your um, uh, radiation exposure. So obviously minimize time, right? A lot of time you'll be talking to your attending and, yeah, and you realize your foot is still on the pedal. So make sure you always like think, you know, where, you know, ease, ease off, we tell them ease off on, on the pedal a little bit. So make sure you don't, um, you know, be cautious with using it. And typically whoever is operating, yeah, whoever is doing the, crossing the lesion, whoever is cannulating the gate, I usually like them to step on the floor. Or, because sometimes if the other person is doing it, then you might stop, do something else, and they're like still, you know, still the foot is on the floor. Or. And also maximize the distance. So we have a wireless pedal. I'm sure all of you guys have a wireless pedal. So if I'm doing DSA, <coughs> shooting a leg or something, I grab, and I'm, I'm, I'm in the corner, you know, using that wireless pedal, shooting the DSA, and then I come back for the procedure. I don't know if you guys notice the people in the cath lab, what they do, they go in the back, right? If you guys do case in the cath lab, they go back. Good for them. I mean, that, that's, that's actually, that's how we should do it, too. And, you know, they use proper shielding, too. <clears throat> and there's something called Alara, which is as low as reasonably achievable. We're supposed to know all these, um, 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 you know, we're supposed to be all be trained in those Alara regulations so that we can all, so because it's, we have to be safe, you know, uh, you know, you, you, you're dealing with yourself, with the patient, and people in the room, right? <clears throat> So again, talk about uh, moving, uh, moving away from it. So, so obviously, it's, it's to the distance square, right? So if you move, if you double your distance, you cut it by four, by four times your radiation exposure, right? So remember that. So if you, if you move away, that's actually the best thing you can do for yourself if you move away from the source. So again, so this is very important. This is a very, very important slide. So. Actually, most of the scatter comes from below the table. We get some from top, but the majority comes from below the table, okay? So, 
And so what they've done is uh, they said, okay, let's measure how much scatter we're gonna get with or without the apron. Those sheets that you guys see in the, in the bottom on the table, do you, you guys, you know what I'm talking about? Trust me, some people you know, be like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. They're almost 100% effective, almost 100%. You know, and then we're not talking about wearing your shield. So just putting those aprons here, you're, you're almost preventing all the scatter from getting to you. Okay, so it, it does work. So without the apron, with, with it, okay? It's very effective. And vice versa, if you flip the source, right? So if you flip the source, right? Now more the, sc the scatter is, is more on top, right, than the bottom. And same thing. If you put your shield, then you'll protect yourself almost completely from the scatter. So again, so that's important because why? I walk in the room, you know, after giving this beautiful talk to my trainees, I walk in the room and I see this, and I go crazy. I'm like, dude, really? Where? I mean, and then, and then you ask the tech, hey, go bring the aprons or the shields, and they're like, what are you talking about? So it was a struggle, but trust me, you guys really need to do that. I mean, this is not acceptable for you guys, whoever is in the room. I mean, this is, I mean, I, I take it very, very seriously. So part of your job as getting the patient ready is to make sure that you're protecting yourself from the scatter and from the radiation. Um, so this is basically, I just throw this in. Now most of the shields that we wear, they're usually 0.5. I know the one I wear 0.5, I used to wear one. It's pretty heavy on the shoulders. Uh, but this is basically to show you that even if you increase the voltage, you you pretty much, it, it, it shields you from, from, the, from the radiation. So it's pretty, it's pretty effective. And so make sure you wear your lead glasses, your thyroid shield, your, your um, um, uh, jacket. And like I said, make sure you wear your, your badge, okay? Make sure you wear it and you, you hand it in to get measured, okay? And usually the best thing to wear it is to wear it like on the upper shoulder, on the neck, or on your, on your chest. I mean, some people wear it on the inside. I didn't include this study. There was one study done, especially in, in uh, pregnant uh, residents and fellows. So they actually wore uh, uh, a detector on the inside, and there was minimal, I think it was even like zero, uh, radiation uh, ex exposed to the fetus, but it's always good, obviously, get protected. So doing double lead, you don't really have to, but again, that's that's obviously your choice. Um, so this is basically some of these uh, expo. This is some of the exposure parameters that we were supposed to reach per year. Obviously, some of it you have to add some natural ionization that we actually get from from just being outside. Uh, so some so so real quick. So ten ten things that you want want you guys to remember. So patient size, you'll see, you do an EVA on a thin patient, maybe 200 milligram, big patient comes in, probably 1,000 milligram. Same procedure, same everything, it, it, the dose goes up significantly. So make sure you, so make sure you, you, so make sure you practice safer, safer measures, so take safer measures when you're dealing with bigger patients. Um, the tube current and the, and the kilo voltage, they're usually now fixed. I mean, when I was in training, we used to use the CRM a lot. We used to actually control how much um, uh, current and the kilo voltage we use, but now it's pretty much standard. You don't really have to mess with it. Um, uh, like we talk about proximity of the X-ray tube to the patient. So, um, um, uh, so obviously, the, 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 the more the distance, you, the more scatter you're going to have, but the closer the patient to the source, oh, what happened? Um, so the, cl the closer the source to the patient, the more you're hurting the patient in a way that he's getting more obviously radiation, but if you increase the distance, you're getting more scatter, okay? So, so keep, keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and also the II, so make sure you bring the II also as close to the patient. Again, same thing, you minimize the scatter, because if it's, you know, if your II is away from the patient, you're gonna get more scatter uh, against yourself. And then LAO results in more Exposure than RAO. So let me ask you this. So if we, if this is this, if this is the CR and the table is here, where do you want to stand? The, the, where, who's going to think is going to get most radiated? The one standing here in front of the C, open C, or is the one standing behind it? So let's say you have RAO or RAO, or something like this. The one facing the open C is going to get most of the scatter. Okay. So also keep that in mind when you're doing these angles, these oblique angles. Uh, Okay. Image and magnification, right? We love it, right? Blow it up three, four times. You can see that carotid lesion or the gate better, but then you're exposing yourself to more and more radiation. So if you can do it, try to be brief and fast. Um, and then the grid also, which is placed in front of the II, also helps with decreasing the, uh, the scatter. Um, culmination. 
very crucial. You know, I hate it when people try to cannulate the gate and they're seeing the whole entire patient. Why? I mean, you're cannulating the gate. Just culminate, focus on that gate, minimize radiation. Same thing if you're stenting something, so just use it. Use culmination as much as possible. And shielding, we talk about the shields. Like I said, I wear 0.5 millimeter uh, sh uh, uh, my shield and, and glasses and everything. And we talked about basically beam, beam on time. So make sure that you, um, you stay, stay on time. Um, and again, lower the fr frame rate. Um, like for example, now I, when I'm doing like the complex aortic stuff, I actually drop fenestrated stuff. I drop the frame rate to like three. So you can drop it, drop it as much as, as, as low so you can minimize also your radiation exposure. Uh, even for legs, I also bring it down. So, um, so this is basically the time frame if you're gonna, you know, get more um, skin lesions, skin uh, skin burns from radiation. It's not an issue for us, right? Because even when you're doing your leg, you're moving the patient, your eye, uh, you know, moving uh, RAO, LAO. But it's this we see more in, in uh, PCIs because you know they're just in one position and try to cross that CTO um, coronary lesion. So there's minimal minimal movement. So that's why we see more in, in uh, after cardiac cath. Uh, than, uh, than in our patient, but it's been documented in our patient population too. Also, there's something called the dose aware system. Basically, it gives you on time so that, you know, when you're, when you're close to that source and then you see yourself, you're red, then you're like, oh, and I need to, it's kind of like a reminder. It's actually, it's very effective because once you see the red, you're like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna take a step back or do something to minimize my radiation. So it gives you on time um, radiation. Uh, these are just uh, some pictures, you know, over time, how things change. Like I said, this is more, Obviously, we see it after like cabbage patients from the angle, uh, sorry, after PCI, uh, PCI patient. Uh, so again, a few other tips. Make sure you how to operate the machine, right? You don't want to come in a complex case and you're like, okay, where's, uh, how do I culminate? How do I move the table? So, so whenever you're, you know, you get started, just if someone not using the room, go there, maybe, you know, buy the, the x-ray tech, a, co a cup of coffee, and then just have them show you how to use it. So, uh, so it's very, very important. Uh, pretty much all the other stuff is stuff that we talked about. Um, it will be on the, on, the, on the presentation. So hopefully after this talk, when you go back, your goal should be, okay, how will I go up and over? How will I do this leg angio? How will I do this karate stand? How will I do this complex EVAR, FIVAR with minimal radiation exposure and conscious use? Hopefully this, this will be the message from this talk. Thank you.